Welcome back everyone, Chad or Patriot Astro here with another Nina plugin video. But today we're gonna to cover three plugins that all serve a similar purpose. Today we're gonna to talk about automated session tracking. So what is session tracking? Well, I'll define session tracking here is where we track information about our target that we're imaging along with details about each individual exposure. This could be basic info like the file name or filter used, exposure length, etc. But this could also include information about our guiding RMS data, detected star counts, histogram information, and even image HFR. As you'll see soon, we can even go further than this. So why are there three plugins today that do the same thing? Well, they all capture data a bit differently, present it uniquely, and are all accessible in different ways. Basically, there's something for everyone. Rather than continue to talk to you outside today, let's head inside to watch the recorded videos and better understand the plugins. Please don't forget to like this video once you feel like it was a good use of your time. Subscribe to this channel so you can see more information like this and share this video online with others who may benefit from it as well. You may not have been the one who created the video, but you can be the one who helps someone else out by posting it in various Facebook groups, Discord and Slack channels, or even other forums. Okay, so who's ready to learn about automated session tracking? Okay, as always, I've jumped into Nina and you can see I'm running a 2.0 release candidate version that of course supports plugins. Now I can show you how these three session tracking plugins actually work. Two quick points before we start. One, you can run these three plugins we're about to see independently or simultaneously. Nina and the plugins are free, so there isn't a cost decision to make. However, there may be some minor disk space or internet bandwidth considerations that come into play, but I'll mention any of those requirements as we review each individual plugin. The second quick point is that you may notice I'm gonna jump around a bit between two days worth of recordings in this video so I can best show you what a complete session looks like as recorded by these plugins. All right, let's go. First, let's look at the Session Metadata plugin by Tom Palmer. After installing the plugin, it's pretty simple to set up. You can see that the CSV enabled is on and JSON is off. This comes down to how you want to view the data. CSV is comma separated values file, or basically where each line has a set of values that are separated by commas like this. I'm going to show you this type of file here shortly. I'm not going to show you JSON in my example, but basically a JSON file is a parsable format that's also easy to read, but looks a bit more like this. This type of file tends to be more applicable to situations where you plan on using scripting to read the data. If you're not a programmer, my assumption is that you're going to be more comfortable with CSV. But again, other than a little bit of disk space, and I mean very little, feel free to experiment with either or both file types. Below this, notice there are default names for the two files that will be created, acquisition details and image metadata. You can use common Nina file naming tokens to customize this file name as you like. Also, just so you know where to look for these files later, they're automatically placed in the light folder for your target alongside your light frames. Okay, the only mandatory thing we need to do here to get it going is to enable the plugin. In case you didn't notice, I'm in the middle of an active session right now, so the plugin will start to create the session data upon completion of the next exposure. There's nothing else to do. Not an advanced sequence command, nothing. Just let it run. I've jumped ahead here to show you what this data may look like if you look at it during the session or maybe even days later. I go into the light frames folder for the target that I captured previously and see that I have the two session metadata plugin files that were created. In my case, these are both CSV files. You can open these files in something like Notepad, WordPad, or Notepad++, but I prefer to open CSV files in a spreadsheet application. Something like Microsoft Excel, or in this case, I'm going to show you Google Sheets. I'll go to Google Sheets and create a blank document. Click File, Import, then go to Upload. I'll just drag the Acquisition Details file here to start. Sheets will ask me a couple questions, but since this is a pretty basic CSV file, you can just click Import Data. You can see the Acquisition Details CSV file is very simple and contains a single informational line detailing the high-level info for this target session and a header line above that. 
target name, coordinates, telescope name, focal length, and focal ratio, camera name, pixel size, and bit depth, as well as my observer location and elevation information. That's it. Well, time to open the second file. Go to File, Import, and Upload the Image Metadata CSV file. This time I want to open the new file as a tab to the current document, so before clicking Import Data, I'll change this first dropdown to Insert New Sheet. A lot more data in this file here. In this case, each line represents information about each individual exposure taken. If you had 1,000 exposures, it would create 1,001 lines in the file. That's one line per exposure, and a top line that contains column headers. Notice because of how I chose to open the second file as another sheet, both are available as tabs below. I'm not going to teach you how to use a spreadsheet application like Google Sheets. I'll leave that to you. But of course, you can resize columns or even the entire view. So what data do we have recorded for each exposure? We have the exposure number, exposure file name and path, filter name, exposure length in seconds, binning info, camera target and current temperature, gain and offset values, a bunch of ADU data like mean, median, min, and max, the number of detected stars, image HFR value, several guiding RMS data points, focuser position, focuser temp, rotation position, and even the peer side. Of course, depending on your hardware connected to Nina, some of these data points and your columns will vary from what I show here. My entire session has been recorded and is easy to view. So what can you do with this info? Well, that's up to you. This is the type of data that you may not need until you need it. Maybe you're having guiding issues. Sorting and graphing this data may help you understand what is happening. Maybe you want to understand temperature impact on your focuser and HFR. You can look at that here as well. Spreadsheet applications open the doors to all sorts of possibilities through features like pivot tables, filters, views, and charts. So here's my take on this. This plugin is extremely low overhead and creates data that takes up almost no disk space and may be helpful at some point. So why not enable the plugin and just let it collect the data for the day where I do need it? Time to look at the second plugin today. This one is called Lightbucket, and unless I'm wrong, it's the oldest of the three we're discussing today, which makes it the original. This one is a bit different in that it tracks your session, but it does it using a web service. This means your session data for both current and previous sessions are accessible from your laptop, phone, or anything with a web browser and an internet connection. It takes a couple steps to set this plugin up once you install it. Here, just under Options, it gives you a link to use to create your own personal API key. Creating this key, as well as viewing your data that Lightbucket collects, requires you to log in using a Discord username and password. If you don't have one yet, it's easy to complete the process, and as a side benefit, will allow you to access the Nina Discord page as well. And before you ask, yes, I do plan on creating a quick video on that topic as well soon. Once you have your Discord account and an API username and API key in hand, place that info here and enable the plugin. You likely don't want to share this info with anyone. This is how your session data will link to the Lightbucket service from Nina. It's important to understand that you can use this same username and key across multiple Nina installs. If you run more than one telescope, you can use the same name and API key so that all of your data is aggregated under that one account. This is actually what I do for each of my telescopes. Okay, so now what? Well, like the previous plugin, nothing. Just let it do its thing. As sessions run, as long as you have an internet connection, session data will be sent to Lightbucket. So how do you view it? Well, easy. Use this link up here. You can click on it to pop up your default web browser, or type it in to another computer or phone's browser. Quick side note here, notice that I'm not logged in to Lightbucket yet. This is visible by the login option at the top right of the web page. This means that you can go look at the service yourself anytime, logged in or not, to see what targets are popular tonight. When I click Login, it will give me a button to log in with my Discord account. Here I can enter my Discord credentials and log in. Another option is to open my phone Discord application and go into my account and click the QR code option. It will ask me to scan this on-screen QR code with my phone and it will log me into the session automatically. Either Discord login method works, your choice. 
You can see I'm logged in by my username at the top right. Clicking on my name shows my tracked history. You can see I've used it on and off for quite a while now. Each tracked target session includes the most recent thumbnail image that was captured. Let me click on this one that I have in progress. You can see I have high level image counts and times by filter, as well as some coordinate and rotation data. I can eventually upload a full resolution completed image and some additional details if I'd like to do this, but it isn't a requirement. I can also delete a session's data, merge two data sets, and even export a target data set so I can continue a session in Nina later. Of course, all my old sessions are here as well. And now on to the last plugin for today, Web Session History Viewer again by Tom Palmer. This is simple to configure once installed. Just enable the plugin and off you go. The other options available are to change the default web server port, which most of you won't need to do, the number of days history you'd like to keep, which is by default 10 days, and the ability to track more images than just light frames. Most of you can leave this the way it is unless you are taking dynamic flat frames during your fully automated Nina session. This plugin installs a simple lightweight web server on your Nina computer that will auto start and stop with Nina, assuming this plugin is enabled. Accessing the data via the web browser is as easy as clicking on or typing one of the three URLs listed here into a web browser that can reach the Nina system. This means it's very unlikely you'll be able to get to this data if you're off your home network. Of course, there are ways to use technologies like VPN tunneling to accomplish this, but for this video, my assumption is that you'll be on your home network and able to reach this web server directly. To show you the features here, I'm going to click on the IP-based URL. This computer is at 192.168.4.27. And notice that it also appended a DIST path which is where the web server resides. It will open to a blank view. Click sessions to select one. I only have one here in this part of the video. Now this is where it gets fun. This plugin tracks everything on an easy to see timeline. Notice it broke the info down into types as well. Each filter has a line, autofocus events have a line, and other Nina events have their own line as well. What happens when I mouse over this autofocus event? You get to look at the AF curve and related data. That's pretty cool, Tom. On the Nina line, I can even see some errors, like a failed plate solve that occurred. I can see when my mount parked, the advanced sequences started and ended, and even view the images right from the timeline. Scrolling down a bit, I have some helpful graphs to display up to two pieces of info simultaneously, in this case, HFR and star count. I can view it for all filters or by filter. Mouse over the graphic and I can see related data. Scroll down a bit more and I can see the images. Notice that it says this session is live right now and that I can adjust the timeline to make certain parts more easily viewable. Now let me try another IP address of my other mount that's also running right now. It's that easy to use. To further drive this home, I'm going to fast forward in time a day here. Notice now I have two sessions to choose from. Here's a live session I recently started, and here's the historical one. Because this is web-based and local, I can even use my iPhone to view the data. Let's look. I can access the same interface as on my laptop, albeit in a smaller window. I can adjust the graphics and what is displayed without limitation. I can even click on and view an image, but be patient. The system needs to retrieve the file and present it to you over your network. Of course, some of this may be easier to view if you rotate your phone. Well, that's the three plugins I planned on presenting today. So let's jump back outside and wrap this up. So what did you think? I showed you three plugins that provide automated ways to track your active and historical imaging sessions within Nina. You can use one of them, all of them, or even none of them if this isn't important to you. As a quick review of the three methods, first we had the Session Metadata plugin. This one doesn't require internet or any network access at all during the imaging session, and will simply write information to a local file alongside your light frames. It works even off network, at a remote dark site, and consumes very little disk space. Next, we looked at the Light Bucket plugin. This method writes session data to an internet accessible web service. If you're big on privacy, this one may not be for you since it does write data to the internet. 
but it does provide you a way to access live and historical session information and recent thumbnail images via the internet, even when you've left the house during your imaging session or if using a remote observatory. Now, this method also required you to get a Discord account as the authentication mechanism, so that's something else to consider. And finally, the last one we covered was the Web Session History Viewer plugin. This one seems the most feature rich, but does require local network access to view the session data. It also requires the installation of a lightweight web server on your NINA system. Once installed, though, you have access to images, NINA events, autofocus runs, and graph data from any web browser with local network access. Is any of this really required? No, absolutely not. Could it be helpful during or after a session? Yes. As you can see, I have lots of options using the various plugins depending on my needs. Have a suggestion or something to share about how you use this data or maybe even graph the information in something like Google Sheets? Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, please like and subscribe. If you find these videos useful and would like to support me as I continue to make more of them, consider going into the video description here on YouTube and use my affiliate links from Amazon, High Point Scientific, and OPT before your next purchase. Of course, this is all at no cost to you. I get a small amount of compensation for pointing you to their web stores. Once there, you can purchase anything you like. It doesn't need to be any specific item or even astronomy related. Well, that's it for today. I hope to be back real soon with some more videos to continue to grow your knowledge on Nina and astrophotography in general. Now go take some great images and of course, clear skies.